On the seventh day of planes, we have a Y of 23. This was a plane that went up against the Y of 22 and lost. It's actually pretty interesting. The F-22 and the Y-F-23 went up against each other, and the U.S. government asked, or the Air Force, I should say, asked specifically for high speed and... what was the other thing? High speed and stealth? Yeah, speed and stealth are what they asked for. The Y-F-23. Faster. Stealthier. Not quite as maneuverable. They chose the YF-22, and that became the F-22. This is not the most accurate replica due to limitations in KSP parts and me not wanting to use a ton of parts to build it, but I think it captures the spirit of it rather well. And one of the funnier things about this particular aircraft's history is they called it the Black Widow 2. It had an access panel right here under the tail that was an hourglass shape, and that was, I guess, somewhat intentional by the designers, but maybe not entirely intentional, and they ended up spray painting it red when no one was looking in order to give it the appropriate look of a Black Widow. This was not authorized. They were instructed to remove it. And unfortunately, I believe all YF-23s were destroyed because it's, like, classified and considered too good to, like, let out since they didn't continue with the design. Also, this has better roll authority than I thought it did, almost a little bit too much. And as you can see right now, I'm actually going... Ah, yes, now I remember. I turned down the throttle on these to make it a little more reasonable, considering that this plane is a very light plane in KSP terms, and this thing would just detonate a pilot kill them with g-forces, essentially, if it had the thrust not artificially gimped just a little bit. And as you can see, of course, the tail is a very unique design. That's one of the things I always loved about this plane, is they're like, why have separate vertical and horizontal stabilizers when you could just have both in one? And it actually works rather well. And uh, I actually have another craft that used this similar style. I'm actually considering this a replacement to that one when it comes to Kerbal X with the version history of Kraft, and uh, that's why I got inspired to make it recently, is because I was like, yeah, let me make another one of those, it's better. As you can see, it flies quite well, and of course, if we wanted to just go ahead and bump up the thrust, we could do that. And now, we have the 110% thrust version, which has a thrust weight ratio exceeding 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, we're gonna get up to 4. Yeah, uh... Nothing in real life has performance like this. 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8. Yeah, you just don't do things like this. We're above 5. And, uh, we're... Jesus Christ, it's still going up. Um, this could probably melt. Oh, okay, it's starting to go down. We got up to 5.3 thrust weight ratio at our peak. Of course, we're still accelerating, even though the thrust is coming down, because the thrust is still higher than our weight. And uh, we're also gaining altitude quite high. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna turn it pitch down just a little bit, but I'm trying to be careful pitching down because uh, this can and will kill the pilot. And as you can see, we are now losing speed as we have reached pretty much the equilibrium and in fact exceeded the equilibrium of just how fast it can go doing this stupid thing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the throttle relatively low and I'm gonna pitch up just a little bit, which almost knocked out uh, Gehart. And again, I should have pulled out my joystick, but I did not. I'm recording these in a batch process, of course, to make things a little bit easier to do, so I simply had not prepared for that. But yeah, the Black Widow 2. It was a very good aircraft, and I'm very happy with this replica, even though it doesn't capture the look entirely. I feel it captures the feel of it, and the lightness, and agility, and... Stuff like that, so I'm very happy with it. In any case, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space.